Good evening, everybody. Um, it's so glad to see all of you joining us tonight uh, on this half an hour where we could spend time in prayer. And uh, so um, welcome to everybody that's joining us tonight. I'm so glad to see all of you taking the time out and just to come join us in prayer and just to fellowship and come to listen to a word of encouragement. So uh, before I start, I actually last week, I, I couldn't join because I had to work late last week. And uh, so Pastor Emilia sent me the recording of the prayer meeting of last week. And um, I was actually blessed out of my socks last uh, with the recording of last week. It was such a powerful word. And I believe it was a word in season, a word that was so needed for us to hear and to reflect on. And uh, with that being said tonight, um, as I was, you know, preparing for tonight um, and asking the Lord, what do I speak about tonight? Um, and so if I should title this encouragement tonight, I want to title this tonight, Wait on God. I want to say it again, wait on God. You know, we live in a time period where the world is so fast-paced. Um, we have to make decisions. And the, the enemy will try his utmost best to keep you so busy that you cannot spend time with God or you don't spend time with God and you don't wait on God. And then we, we make decisions without God and when things doesn't go according to plan the first thing we ask God where were you when this happened to me and so with that being said tonight you know God is never late God is never early but God is always on time there is something about waiting on God you say, Etienne, what do you mean there's something about waiting on God? I want to say it again. There's something about seeking God and waiting upon Him. It's in the waiting, number one, that God forms and makes you to become more like Him. It's in the waiting, number two, that God teaches, you, teaches us patience. And, and some of us need patience. Amen? It's in the waiting that God reveals his purpose and plan and his heart. He reveals it to you in the waiting. And number four, it's in the waiting that God teaches you to hear his voice and to follow his voice in the midst of the crisis. And so with that being said, I want to encourage you with a couple of scriptures. And the, the first scripture comes out of the book of Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 32. And so if you have your Bibles, please turn with me and it says the following. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. He understands his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fail. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What an awesome promise of, from God if we wait upon him. And then the next scripture I want to share with you. Just give me a second. The next scripture comes out of the book of Psalm. Psalm 10 verses 9. And it says the following. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in a time of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. 
that's a powerful promise of the Lord. He says, for those who know your name. How do you know the name of the Lord? It's based on relationship. Once you have experienced God's breakthrough or a miracle in your own life, and you go through the same circumstances or something similar to that, and you've seen how God has taken you through it, you know that when you face it again, you can put your trust in him, knowing that he'll take care of it. Amen? The next scripture I want to share with you tonight comes out of the book of Psalm, and it is Psalm 62, verses 5, and it says the following, My soul wait silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I want to say this tonight. If your expectation is on, on man or on humans, it's going to be, you're going to be disappointed tonight. But if your expectation is on God, he promises us that, and, and it says here, he, he, is, oh, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times. You people, put your put your out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. You know the Bible says in 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 that verse. He says in in verse eight. He says, "Trust in Him at all times." We shouldn't just trust God. You know when we go through difficulties, and 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 when things get difficult, He says, "Trust me at all times." Amen. The following scripture I want to share with you comes out of the book of Psalm 46, and it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. And then the last scripture before I conclude, and we're going to pray, and this comes out of the book of Job, chapter 8, verses 5, and it says this, if you would earnestly seek God, and make your supplication to the Almighty. If you were pure and upright, surely now he would awake for you and prosper your rightful dwelling place. Though your beginnings were small, yet your latter end would increase abundantly. I want to read that last part again. It says, though your beginning was small, yet your latter end would increase abundantly and so with that being said you know this is a beautiful beautiful song and you all know this song by heart and it it's a song and, and I, I love that song I, I i listen it so often when i have quiet time with god and it's a song that says i surrender all all to thee my blessed savior i surrender all what does it mean when we say i surrender all it basically means, as simple terms, all. It means everything. And so tonight, if you are listening to me, if you are carrying a burden tonight that nobody knows about tonight, surrender it to Jesus tonight. When Jesus say, I, when we sing that song, I surrender all, if you have that burden tonight in your heart, you have loved ones that's unsaved. You have children that's not serving the Lord. It's not your burden to carry it. Give it to Jesus. If you are sick in body tonight and you have pain tonight, that burden is not for you. That sickness is not for you to carry. Give it to Jesus tonight. If you're carrying tonight a financial burden, you say, Etienne, I'm sitting with a massive financial burden. Burden, I don't know what to do. My answer is simple. Give it to Jesus. You know, when, what we need to understand is when, when Jesus hung on the cross and he cried out, it is finished. The battle is over. It was not just for your salvation. But it's for every burden that you will be facing. 
although the cross and the crucifixion happened more than 2,000 years ago, the Bible, you know, Jesus knows the end from the beginning. So he knows exactly where you are finding yourself tonight, what you are facing tonight. He sees your heartache tonight. He sees the, the, the burden. The, he sees the cry of your heart. All he's asking you to do tonight is to give it to him and he'll take care of it. And so before we pray tonight, I want to just end off with this scripture. And this is so powerful tonight. And it says the following in Matthew 11, verses 28. And it says the following, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here Jesus gives you the, the invitation and he says to me, whatever you are carrying upon your shoulders, just bring it to me. I'll take care of it. You don't have to suffer anymore. You don't have to carry your financial burden anymore. You don't have to carry the weight of, of not knowing what I'm going to put on my table for food tomorrow. How I'm going to settle this bill. Because Jesus is never late. He's always on time. If it's sickness in your body tonight. All you have to do is say. Jesus I give you my pain. I give you the sickness. Please heal me. And as you do that. The miracle working power will, will, will flood you tonight. And he, he will change your circumstances. And you'll look back at it and say. God. You know what? It's worth serving you because it's in the waiting that God changes everything. And so I want to encourage you tonight with that word. And so, dearest Lord Jesus, we are grateful tonight for the opportunity we have to share the gospel. We are glad and we are so, so, so um, thankful tonight, Lord, that we could set aside a half an hour to come into your presence, Lord, and just to be a part of something so much bigger than we could ever think or fathom, Lord. And Lord, as I pray tonight, I sense the presence of God is here tonight to change people's lives. And to take their burdens and their yokes off their shoulders tonight, Lord. And so I pray tonight, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, that you will step into every situation. Lord, you know the cry of your people. You know exactly what they need tonight, Lord. And Lord, as they surrender their burdens to you tonight, Lord. Be it financially, Lord. Be it, Lord, sickness tonight, Lord. I rebuke in the mighty name of Jesus every sickness and bodies tonight. I rebuke pain tonight in bodies. I rebuke infirmities tonight and I command it to let go and let loose in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I speak to financial difficulties tonight. Lord, I pray that you will turn the situation around. Lord, as your people seek your face and they wait upon you, Lord, Lord, as they wait, that you'll send the provision, that you'll send the answer, that you'll send the direction that they need to move. Lord, as I listened to that call last week of Brother Shawkett's testimony as how he sowed and he was obedient to the voice of God because, Lord, when you, we are obedient to the voice of God that's always been there will always be a reward in it Lord because Lord you 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 reward obedience and so Lord I pray tonight in the name of Jesus Lord as your people seek your face and they wait upon you for direction Lord that you will speak a life-changing word and Lord that they will take heed of that word and they will apply that word to their lives and they will see the miracle working power of God manifest in their lives like never before in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray tonight for Christy and, 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 and those people that came out of hospital that is recovery, recovering common tonight, Lord. Lord, I command every bit of pain, every discomfort to let go and let loose in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, when we enter the presence of God, there can be no sickness. There can be no 
bondage. There can be no oppression because you set the captives free in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, tonight, Lord, I want to pray, Lord, for Pastor Emilia, Lord, that is ministering at a, a women's conference in Booster. Lord, I pray, Lord, that the word that comes out of her mouth, Lord, will be inspired and driven by the Holy Ghost. Lord, as she opens her mouth, that the presence of God would start changing lives. I pray, Lord, as she opens her mouth and she's obedient to the Holy Spirit, that the fire of the Holy Ghost would sweep that place, that sickness will be healed, the oppressed will be set free, that the morning will be changed into glory, and Lord, that there will be joy, unspeakable joy, and full of glory, because Jesus is in the house. And so, Lord, I thank you for what you're about to do in Worcester. Lord, I pray for any other women's conference. I'm thinking about in Kingdom Light Church this weekend, Lord, they have a women's conference called Flourish. Lord, I pray, Lord, that the mighty presence of God would move upon your people like never before. Lord, if there is ever a time that people need encounters, Lord, I'm not just talking Sunday morning, sitting in the church and saying yes to Jesus, because Lord, people can say yes to Jesus, but they can still walk out bound. And that's why I pray, and that's always the cry of my heart, Lord, that people will have encounters with you, because once you've encountered Jesus, you cannot be the same anymore. More. He changes you from the inside out so that you can be a light bearer for him. And so, Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, that you will sweep our churches in South Africa. Lord, when I hear what's happening in Lofdal, the miracles, the signs, and the wonders, I hear about the salvation. Lord, it stirs my faith because there's something happening on the horizon. There's a glimpse of what God is about to do in South Africa and in our world today, Lord. And I thank you for all obedient servants. I thank you for servants that spends the time with you. I thank you, Lord, that they are willing to spend the time because it's in that moment where God steps in and he releases the abundance of his presence, he releases the abundance of who he is in us, Lord. And so I bless you, uh, your people tonight. Lord, let this word, Lord, grow in their spirit. Let it not just fall in their Lord, but Holy Spirit, I pray tonight that you will water that seed, Lord, and that their lives will be impacted by it. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Brother Shokat, are you there? Amen. I'm right here. <laughs> I can go through. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We thank you for your word that has gone out this evening. We thank you that you remain faithful, that you remain on the throne. We bless your holy name this night. The one who is called faithful and true. The one, as your word says, that doesn't fail. Even your word, Father, in, in Hebrews in Hebrews 6, 13, it says, When God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And my King and my God, and even further down where it says that it is impossible for God to lie. I thank you for every person that's on this call and those who are connected to, to this call. We thank you, Father, that your word says that it is impossible for you to lie. Your words is, as you said, the promise for Abram that surely in blessings you will bless us and in multiplying we you will multiply us and we claim that promise for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I claim that promise for every single one on this call and their families, even those that are that are, are needing jobs. You, I know Pastor Itin has prayed for for finances, those that are busy with job interviews, those that have made job applications. Father, I thank you that we can claim your promises that says in, in blessings that we are blessed. In increasing, we are we will increase. And for I thank you for promotion. I thank you for increase. I thank you for opening up the doors. Your word says you have opened up a door. You have opened up doors as for us to go through doors of blessings, doors of promotion, doors of finances. Father, whatever it is, I thank you that you are in control, that you make a way. 
like you made a way for your children through the Red Sea, you are making a way for your children even on this call, for our families, for our families for salvation, for our families for healing, for my King and my God, even for every person that has a business, that is busy with business contracts, that's busy with tenders, that's that's busy with clients and trying to close deals. I thank you already that you, like you set Joseph up in the nighttime that you're already working in the, in the scenes behind, you're working on our behalf, that you will perfect that, everything that concerns us. And so I pray for wisdom for those who are busy with those things in business, Father. And thank you for adding. I thank you for supernatural provision that it, we can say. Provision is coming from the north and the south and the east and the west. I pray for favor again over every single one. In the name of Jesus, there is a prayer warrior which I want to commit to you. And the prayer request that came for the situation at work, that sales must come through. Sales needs to come through for her in her department. It is quite serious in, in that situation. I ask and pray for favor. Favor like never before. In the name of Jesus, your word says, my king, in Numbers 6, 24, that the Lord would bless us and keep us, that the Lord makes his face to shine upon us yeah, and be gracious to us, that the Lord will lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace, even on that situation. And for favor, favor, favor. Father, like your word says, that, that the seed of Abraham through Jesus Christ, we receive the blessing of Abraham. In blessings, bless us. In multiplying, multiply us as the stars of heaven and as the sand on the seashore. Father God, and, and that the, in Malachi 3.12, let all the nations call us blessed. Luke 1.48, let all generations call us blessed. In, in, in Mark 11.10, we live in the kingdom of the blessed because our Father is the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Father, I thank you that you, you have set your seal upon us even in this night, this call, even in this season. I thank you for the word that went out tonight about, about what you do in the waiting. And sometimes and most times it is not the easiest place to be. But I thank you for your word that says you do not lie. When you've made a promise to us, you stick to it. You fulfill every detail of that that you've promised us. Your word will never return to you empty, but it shall accomplish every single thing that you've, you've set it out to do. And so, Father, I thank you tonight for your blood covenant for each and every single one on this call. I thank you for the blood of Jesus over this nation from the tip of, of, of Cape Town of, of South Africa right through the very northern borders and even on the south and the east and the west. You remain king of this nation. South Africa is not going under. South Africa is blessed. I thank you for the revival fire. Father, for what you're doing in these end times. I thank you for the encounters that every home will have, that they're busy having. I pray even for the wisdom, my king, in the name of Jesus, for blessing on every single household. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm reminded even now, even in the Old Testament, as they as they put the blood on the doorpost and on the windows and the lintels, I thank you for the blood of Jesus over every home, over every door frame, over every uh, doorpost, over every window. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I thank you for the I thank you for the blood of Jesus that has never lost its power. And every demonic force and everything that came to come upon households to mess up and to bring division and to cause disruption and to cause uh, uh, whatever, my king. I speak the peace of God over every household. I speak the peace of God into the very atmosphere of every home in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that your blood still speaks, that there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power, I say to every household, every household that has a situation that is not of God, that the enemy has tried to cause division and, and whatever, my King and my God, I thank you for your peace that passes all understanding to be their portion. And I call into alignment with the word of God right now. 
every spirit of confusion, every spirit of division, every spirit of, of anger and resentment and bitterness that is moving in the atmosphere, every, every demonic force that wants to come and bring division in every household, in marriages, in families, right now in those households, I speak the peace of God and we command that thing to live in Jesus' mighty name, and that your peace would reign in those homes. So, Father, we bless you this night, and we give you all the honor and the glory and praise that is due to your name, and we say amen and amen. Hi, Brenda, if you are on the call, can you open your mic and take four minutes or so to pray? We've got our ladies' conference tomorrow, and um, as Pastor Etienne said, I'm ministering Saturday in Booster. Pastor Natasha is ministering a ladies' conference Saturday in the Strand, and uh, the end of the month, I'm ministering a ladies' conference in um, at Pastor Oscar's church, uh, Victory Kingdom. Um, there's a lot of ladies' conferences going on from out, uh, out from our, our platform. Maybe you can just pray for us for all support tomorrow, for lives to be changed. Amen. Um, good evening, everyone. Father God, your word says he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure, rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. Lord, thank you that we can take you on your word. Lord, thank you that we can bring everything to you, Father God. Lord, we pray over each and every um, women's conference that's going to be held from tomorrow up until the end of the month, Father God. Thank you that women's lives will be transformed. Lord, we know the difficulties women are facing, Lord. Some of them are breadwinners. Some of them are going through dire, dire um, problems, Father God. Some of them, their children's drug addicts, Father. Some of them can barely afford to live, Father God. But I pray, Lord, through this conferences father that you will raise up the spirits of these women father god that they will know and understand how great and how mighty you are father god thank you that each pastor that's going to be ministered like everybody prayed father that you can have and speak to them, Father God. You're gonna, Father God. You're gonna. There's gonna be a word of a divine intervention in each and every woman's life, Father. I pray for change to take place like never before, Lord. As we, as these conferences are happening, Father, I pray that your fire will spread not only at the that conference, Father God, but as they go go leave the conferences, Father God, that there will be a rapid fire spreading into each and every into their families father god lord we speak the life over the over families that sound safe father god and as we as pastors are ministers like pastor natasha pastor emmy that's going to minister father and every lady that's going to minister tomorrow as well father that you will can you're going to use them mightily lord that you will speak into their lives father god lord we 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 are going with an expectation to these conferences because we know that you will deliver those who need it like never before, Father. And we trust your word, Father God. Lord, and tonight I also want to pray. Um, we've received numerous prayer requests for global warming, Father God. Lord, the earth is yours, Father God. And we pray, Father God, that the weather patterns, Father God, will we call it into being, Father God. We call it back to what it used to be, Father God. And Lord, countries like... Um, Italy, there's water restrictions already, Father. England is um, mentioned it as well, Father. And I pray, Father God, for those countries, Father God. Lord, South Africa is not far. Certain regions in South Africa is not far from that, Father God. But tonight we procl proclaim your will over these countries, Father God. We proclaim and we know, Father God, that these weather patterns, Father God, will come into alignment with your word, Lord. And I honor you for what you're going to do, Lord, because we are in expectation for, for great things yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yeah, Lord, I thank you that just uh, to conclude, we can just give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. We bless your name, Lord, and you are great and you do miracles so great. And there's no one else like you, Lord. I thank you that we can give you glory and honor and praise for each prayer that we say, yes, Lord, it is yea and amen. And as we believe so we shall receive lord i thank you i see sophie is on the call and i just want to pray for sophie as well as she is uh, she has been located to johannesburg under difficult circumstances she is working but i thank you lord that you use sophie as your anointed um uh, one there in that uh, in, in that circumstances every morning when she walks in that people will see it is that they will take note that it, that is an anointed woman of God and we pray and we speak a blessing over her and I thank you Lord that you just put her there to um, to make a difference to the glory and the honor of your name I thank you Lord that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper Lord I thank you lord that your word says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty to through to pull down the strongholds and this is what we do on a monday night we are pulling down the strongholds in the name of jesus and i want to declare it tonight to say satan the blood of jesus is against you and there where the blood is you cannot come in and i thank you lord that you make us glorious you make us victorious lord you are coming back for a church on fire you are coming back for a church on the move you are coming back for a glorious triumphant church lord and i thank you lord that the fire of god will burn in each and every one of our hearts to the glory and the honor of your name. Lord, I give you glory. I thank you. It is settled. It is done. It is finished. Perfectly perfected. Completely completed. You have done it, Lord. And I thank you tonight for victory like never before. Jobs for the jobless. Finances for, the, for those who don't have. Uh, provision for those who, who have lack, Lord. Uh, I thank you, Lord. God is able and god bless you god bless each and everyone on the call stay under this um anointing stay under under his protection seek his face come back to his secret place where you belong that he can show you his glory to the glory and honor of his name enjoy a awesome super fantastic wonderful blessed week and we trust god for signs and wonders and miracles god did it once he did it twice he can do it again and again and again god bless you until next monday shalom